Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. First thing first, next week's video will be our monthly Q&A. Please post your questions in the comment section or in the Ask Dao Yi channel of the Dao Yi Discord or email me if you prefer to be anonymous. In last week's video, I introduced the eight word practice in Xing Yi. So today, I will introduce a similar concept in Bagua, the eight ability practice or Ba Neng. But first, let's get high on tea. This week's tea is a Long Jing tea, a must know and a must have for anyone that enjoys green tea. Long Jing often ranks at the very top in most tea competitions in China. Longjing is the name of a region in Hangzhou city, Zhejiang province of China. Longjing has two characters. Long means dragon and Jing means well. Originally, the village had a water well and the water quality of that well was great. A popular legend is that village has it that there was a dragon in the well, so Longjing Chun or Longjing Village was named after this water well. The region surrounding that area enjoys more than a thousand years worth of history of tea production. Around 300 years ago, during the Qing Dynasty, the processing method of Longjing tea was well developed. Especially Qianlong, one of the Qing emperors, visited the Longjing region to drink the tea and since he really liked the tea, he named the 18 tea bushes Yu Cha or Imperial Tea. This is the photo of the 18 tea bushes. Now, let me show you a photo of some Longjing tea leaves. You may notice that the shape of the tea leaves is a flat. Well, that is the shape of a Longjing tea leaves. There are two important criteria to categorize a tea. First, tea tree species and two, processing method. So, Longjing tea follows a very specific processing method and uses tea tree leaves from a specific species. I just mentioned that most people believe that Longjing tea has the history worth more than 1,200 years. However, tea growing and tea drinking history in that region does not mean that they were using the specific Longjing tea processing method that was invented about 300 years ago. Today, a tea needs to satisfy both criteria to qualify as a Longjing tea. So, technically speaking, tea produced more than 300 years ago in that region should not be considered Longjing tea even though tea was made in the Longjing region. By the way, if you visit the Longjing area, some people may mention visiting a place having 18 tea bushes, claiming them to be the original 300-year-old tea bushes. Let's look at the photo again. Beware, these 18 bushes are not the original ones from 300 years ago. Actually, those original 18 bushes died a long time ago and these 18 bushes were planted only a few decades ago. In other words, a tourist trap. I'd like to share an incident from my teenage years. One day, my family received some great teas and Longjing was one of them. My aunt brewed a cup of Longjing and asked my grandfather to identify the tea without showing him the package. He correctly identified it as Longjing after the first sip. 
That just blew my mind. I still remember it like yesterday. Longjing tea has to be picked at the right time for the perfect flavors. Since this tea is picked very early on compared to other teas, there's no need to use pesticides. Also, only the tender top bud is picked. A very important step in the processing method of Longjing tea is its frying process. Tea leaves have to be fried in a wok at 150 to 200 degrees Celsius for about 3 to 5 minutes, depending on the quality of the leaves. And uh, only a small quantity of tea leaves can be processed each time. So, Longjing tea processing is both labor and time intensive, which one combined with the limited supply of the tea leaves makes it very expensive. No wonder it is the most popular and prestigious tea in China. I have some Longjing tea at home, such as this one. This is an amazing Longjing tea. Longjing tea is available in many flavors including sweet, roasted chestnut, and uh, butter. It is rich in tea polyphenols, good for weight management, relief from symptoms of uh, stress and anxiety, lower the ri risk of uh, heart ailment, and so on. However, people drink Longjing tea mostly for its great flavor more than for its health benefits. To brew Longjing tea, water at 85 degrees Celsius for 30 seconds is the popular method. However, I prefer to use water at 95 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds. I noticed a better flavor with this method. Also, some people prefer to add tea on top of the water, but I prefer adding water to tea. For each subsequent brew, 80 degrees Celsius for 5 seconds actually is necessary. You cannot brew Longjing too many times due to the nature of green tea. Normally, 3 brews maximum to extract the great flavor of Longjing tea. This is the tea decoction of Longjing. Very nice color and great taste. I'm sure you will enjoy Longjing tea. Again, it is very often rated the best tea according to many surveys. A must have if you enjoy green tea. Do let me know your experience with Longjing tea in the comment section. With that, let's move on to the main topic for today, Ba Neng or 8 Ability in Ba Gua. Topics covered in today's video include First, De and Neng in Chinese culture. Second, Si De and Ba Neng in Ba Gua. Third, Practice of Ba Neng. Fourth, Principle of Ba Neng. Fifth, Misperception of Ba Neng. 6th, demonstration, 7th, correction of uh, students' practice, and 8th, uh, takeaways. So, without any further ado, let's get started. First, De and Neng in Chinese culture. De and Neng are two important concepts in Chinese culture. De means virtue or moral. Neng means ability or function. In ancient China, even before the creation of the Ke Zhu Zhi Du or imperial examination system, which lasted more than a thousand years, different systems had been used by governments to select their officials. For example, Lun De Shi Neng, a well-developed system used around 
1000 BC had a huge influence in determining the standard for official selection for about 2000 years. Lun de shi neng means to promote the abled person based on their virtue. So, only virtuous people would be selected as officials in ancient times. In other words, De indicates inner character, while Neng indicates the external abilities of an individual. Also, according to Confucianism, Neng or ability without De or virtue may cause harm to society. Also, in general, De and Neng can also be used to describe two objects in which the Former determines the latter. In other words, the internal factor determines the external final result. So, how are De and Neng applied in Bagua practice? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 2 Si De and Ba Neng in Bagua. Bagua O8 trigram. Is the martial art style that applies the Bagua concept to its martial practice. I have a lot of Bagua lecture videos on this channel. Links to my Bagua playlist is in the description. So, in this video, I will focus on the main topic building upon prior concept without repeating them. It's no surprise that. Bagua practitioners prefer to use the number 8 in categorizing different concepts and practices of that system, such as 8 basic postures, 8 big palm, and so on. Bagua's fundamental practice has often been described using the term Bafa or 8 method by many practitioners. At the same time, other names such as Ba Neng or 8 Ability or 8 Function have also been very popular terms to describe the same concept and practice. To the best of my knowledge, Sun Lu Tang, the famous internal martial artist in the 19th century, adopted the term Ba Neng from Confucianism. He also adopted other term Si De or Four Virtue, also from Confucianism, to describe the concept that governs the Ba Neng or the Eight Ability. As an aside, there also exists a Ba Gua routine named Ba Gua Ba Zi Gong or Eight Word Practice of Ba Gua. Developed by Sha Guozheng, a student of Jiang Rongqiao. Jiang Rongqiao was a student of Zhang Zhaodong, my grandfather's teacher. Some people attribute the creation of this routine to Jiang Rongqiao as well. However, I believe Sha Guozheng to be the creator since that routine reflects Sha's practice more than his teacher's practice. Now, Let's get back to the main topic. Si De consists of two characters. Si means four, while De means virtue. So, the concept of Si De consists of four words used to present four important characteristics of the nature of Bagua power. They are Shun, Ni, He, and Hua. Each of which will be introduced in the principles section of this video. In this section, let's focus on Ba Neng or 8 ability. So, what are the 8 abilities included in the Ba Neng? They are Tui Tuo Dai Ling, Ban Lan Jie Kou. These 8 words can be used in both, first, describing a specific movement, and two, Describing eight types of martial energies. Now, let me explain them one by one. 
forced twi o pushing can be used in both single hand or double hands. Pushing power can be applied to many areas of the opponent's body, such as the chest, back, ribcage, and so on. The nature of the Tui power is sharp and quick. The objective of the Tui power is to attack the opponent or to change the direction of the incoming attack. Second, Tuo or holding can be used in both single hand or double hands, but a double hand posture is more frequently used than a single hand. Tuo energy should be in the horizontal and or upward direction. More importantly, in applying Tuo power, a longer contact time between your hands and the opponent's body is necessary for optimal effect. Third, Dai or pairing, commonly used in a single hand posture. Changing the income attack by quickly deflecting the attacking force sideways. The Dai energy should be fast and light for optimal effect. Force, Ling or leading, can be used in both single hand or double hands. Ling or leading means intentionally controlling the direction of the incoming attack. The difference between Dai or pairing and Ling or leading is that Ling requires a comparatively longer contact time between your hand and the opponent's hand. Very often, the body and the limbs should coordinate very well in order to disturb the opponent's balance, which is one of the objectives of uh, this practice. Fix, ban, or locking and the turning. The reason why two actions have been used to describe one word is that ban is the combination of a locking and the turning energies. Bear in mind that locking here does not mean that you have to make the opponent's arm lose mobility, but instead you need to apply enough strength so that the opponent's body part can be controlled or locked, and then apply turning energy to it for a full bun effect. Turning is just like the circular energy used in Tai Chi practice, but is normally applied after the opponent's limbs or body has been locked. 6. Lan or intersecting or intercepting. Normally used in a single hand or arm instead of double hands. Lan intends to change the incoming attacking direction, but not necessarily to deflect the incoming attack. Normally, Lan is both stronger and faster than both Dai and Ling or pairing and leading. 7. Jie or blocking intends to stop the opponent's attack way before your opponent finishes executing his full attack. So, as long as the income attack has been stopped, and the diet energy applied is jie. Jie should be fast and furthermore correctly timed and correctly angled. Normally, the angle of impact is greater than 90 degrees. 8. Ko or downward controlling implies the energy used to move downward in order to control the opponent's arm or other body parts. Ko can be executed with both short and prolonged contact time. So, these 8 words are 8 types of energy as well as 8 types of self-defense techniques. Topic 3. Practice of Baneng. As mentioned in the previous section, 
Banang or eight ability is used to describe both eight types of energy and eight types of martial techniques. Bear in mind that each type of energy can have multiple different physical movements, so do not be under the wrong impression that Ba Neng only talks about eight movements. To be fully precise, Ba Neng can be described as eight types of movements that generate eight types of energy. I cannot emphasize this enough. The practice of Ba Neng traditionally involves single exercises for Fa Jin practice. So, Fa Jin training during circle walking used to be a popular training method in the old days. Circle walking makes the Ba Gua Fa Jin much harder, which is another reason why a good Fa Jin level in Ba Gua practice is hard to achieve. Martial application training is also a necessary step in Ba Neng practice. So, practicing these eight types of martial techniques with the training partner is an effective and efficient way to master this practice. Partner practice is very useful to practice and experience these applications. Sometimes, training alone is not sufficient. A key aspect is that, after understanding the 8 ability or 8 type of energy, you should analyze your Bagua routine based on these concepts, and also intentionally apply the right power at the right place in order to achieve the right martial effects. It is a long-term practice and requires a lot of hard work. This video is not aimed at teaching Ba Neng martial applications, but at explaining fundamental concepts. Now, let's look at the concept of Si De or Four Virtue, the four important principles of Ba Neng in the next topic. Topic 4. Principle of Ba Neng Si De or Four Virtue in Ba Gua include Shun, Ni, He and Hua. Let me explain them one by one. First, Shun, which means natural and smooth. In practice, Shun requires body parts to be naturally extended outward without stiffness. In other words, energy is naturally generated through the entire body's circular movement. Overemphasizing one body part at the expense of other may potentially create stiffness. So, following the natural way in Ba Neng or 8 ability training is one of the four key principles. Second, Ni, which means reverse. In Ba Gua practice, Ni implies that energy should not only be handled in an outward approach, but should also have an inward approach. This is what the word reverse implies here. In other words, outward motion with an inward approach is an important principle of Ba Neng. Third, He, which means harmonization or integration. He implies that, when working on Fa Jin, each part of the body should function in harmony with the rest, or in other words, function as an integrated unit and the power release should be continuously executed without pausing. Ba Gua practice requires movements to be executed in a circular way without stopping. The same goes for its energy, a very important point indeed. Fourth, Hua, which means conversion or transformation. It means that 
in Bagua energy training, you should focus on developing prenatal energy. In other words, stiffness should be avoided and any practice should be the integration of softness and hardness. Power should be flexible, yet strong and fast. It emphasizes the result of a practice that postnatal energy has transformed into prenatal energy, which reflects the fundamental concept of the internal style of martial art practice. By the way, as mentioned in prior videos, in martial art practice, prenatal energy means action without preparation or subconscious action, while postnatal energy means proactive action or conscious action. So, Shun Ni He Hua are the four virtues or Si De of Ba Gua, which can be considered the principle of eight ability or Ba Neng. We can realize that traditional Ba Gua practice in terms of dealing with some important training principles is not only practical but also systematic. Focusing on the traditional way of training helps you achieve a much deeper understanding and meaningful training. You should pay conscious attention to these four words in your Bagua practice, especially during Ba Neng practice. Now, let's clarify a common misperception in the next topic. Topic 5 Misperception of a Ba Neng, a concept often perceived only as a martial technique, is effectively misperceived by many practitioners. For example, some people believe that since eight ability is a part of the basic power and technique training of Ba Gua, there is no need to train them specifically. That is a misperception. Let me clarify. In any martial art practice, traditionally, practitioners always dedicated the specific practice to the most important contents. For example, in power training, some of the most suitable single movements are chosen from among the many many movements present in the style. Likewise, since Ba Neng is related to the energetic practice of Ba Gua, and it also reflects the fundamental Ba Gua martial skills. It should be practiced specifically, or else you may not make sufficient progress, no matter how much time you spend on it. So, why not spend less time and effort to achieve better results? Analyzing the eight ability when working on Ba Gua routines is sure to make it happen. I always tell my students that at a certain moment in Ba Gua routines are more suited for Fa Jin addition so that their martial skills will improve with time. It is very hard to reach advanced levels without proactive training, especially on some advanced content. Bottom line, specific content demands specific practice. Topic 6 Demonstration. Today, I'd like to demonstrate a Bagua movement to express the eight ability aspect. Pay attention to the changing of the hand shape. Okay, let me demonstrate one of the Bagua exercises. Topic 8 Correction of Students' Practice. Yeah. Okay, let my students demonstrate one of the eight big palms of Cheng Stel Bagua. Then I correct his uh, movement. Slowly. One, two, three, four, 
five, then one, two, three. Block, block, turn, then strike, elbow block, palm extend backward, then pulling, then yes, right, yes. Let's make some uh, improvement. Let's start from the beginning. Not correction? Uh, yeah, same. <laughs> so the, for the first uh, palm, this the in Cheng style, that's the only movement that palm move inward. So you should move to the center line of the chest, move inward, right? One. Then when you extend, elbow is axis, extend. Then and then elbow push toward the palm, then extend the chest at this movement. Right. Then when you kick, fingers point forward. Then, then chopping motion. Make a low posture. Then palm in ten, then same height. One, turn the foot, then two. Then three, strike. Then the arm bend a little bit. Yes, bend the arm. Then back foot move, elbow block. Then wrestling movement. And uh, not so high, lower, chest level. Then insert. Yes. Then continue, fall. Then pulling motion. Yes. Then circular. Body remain the same height, then turn. Very good, thank you. It's good. Topic eight. Take away. First, de and neng are important concepts in Chinese culture. De means virtue, while neng means ability. Ability should be built upon virtue according to Confucianism. Second, si de or four virtue and ba neng or eight ability indicate eight types of energy and self-defense techniques that should be governed under four principles of Ba Gua practice. Third, the practice of Ba Neng involves understanding each of the Ba Neng, being able to analyze each of them when working on Ba Gua routines can accelerate the progress in training. Fourth, Si De or Four Virtue it's the core principle of a Ba Neng. Si De includes Shun, Ni, He, and Hua. Fifth, a common misperception of a Ba Neng is that since eight ability is part of the basic power and technique training of a Ba Gua, there's no need to train them specifically. Remember, that is a misperception. I recommend you analyze the eight ability when working on Bagua routines. That concludes today's video. A quick reminder to send me your questions for next week's Q&A video. Thank you for watching, see you next time, and enjoy your practice.